Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. Well, this week we've talked about tears and we've talked about the cares of life. And today I just want to talk to you about contentment. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation in a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, the scripture is saying, is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Contentment is spiritual rest and contentment is quietness. Contentment comes as we pursue godliness and holiness. For in godliness and holiness, we become aware of what is important and what is eternal. We just read that godliness with contentment is great gain. I think it is difficult to separate really contentment and godliness. They are intertwined and they overlap one another. A lack of contentment stems stems from what I call uh, the more syndrome. The more we have sometimes, the more we want. And also a lack of contentment can stem from a lack of commitment. When we are truly committed to Christ and his cause and example, we accomplish things. And with accomplishment comes also a sense of contentment. For we are doing what we know we were put here to do and what we should be doing. Contentment doesn't depend on material wealth or things. The great Apostle Paul is such a wonderful example of contentment. And he gives us the blueprint. He says, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. Paul tells us that contentment is something to be learned. It doesn't always come naturally. One of the most devastating things to our spirit and, and, and causes discontentment and restlessness is the murmuring and complaining. Murmuring and complaining gets into our spirit and causes discontent. Philippians 2.14 tells us, do everything without complaining and arguing. Proverbs 15.16 says, better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Having things in the right situations don't always, you know, ensure contentment. Contentment is a learned state. It is a commitment to the Lord Jesus in accepting our present situation and circumstances, knowing that he is enough and that he can supply and make up the lack. And he is the one that actually can um, change our circumstances. One of the best stories I've ever read on contentment is regarding a woman named Ella. Ella worked as a missionary with the Pygmies in Africa for 52 years. She left her country, her family, and all that was familiar. Primitive didn't even begin to describe her living conditions. You know, into the heat and humidity of the African bush. But Ella found no relief because... Uh, electricity and air conditioning and other modern conveniences were only a dream. Some days she said it was so hot that she would have to bring the thermometer inside because it couldn't register past 120 degrees without breaking. Alice's daughter wondered how her mom had managed to live a life of contentment when her circumstances would have caused the hardiest to complain. But in an old diary of her mother's, Ella's daughter discovered her mother's prescription for contentment. She had found that her mother wrote the following, Never allow yourself to complain about anything, not even the weather. Secondly, never picture yourself in any other circumstance or someplace else. Thirdly, never compare your lot with another's. 
Fourth, never allow yourself to wish this or that had been otherwise. And the last one, never dwell on tomorrow. Remember that tomorrow is God's and not ours. Ella's eyes were fixed on eternity and not on herself. Her tomorrows belonged to God. She had given them to Him. Because all of Ella's tomorrows were nestled in God's loving arms, she was free to live today. One day at a time, she could make the right choice and grow to possess the holy habit of contentment. I pray today, beloved, that you are content. When you are content in your situation, knowing that the God of contentment himself dwells in your soul, I promise you, you will have faith to live by. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor. 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636. Hi, this is Sue Taylor with Faith to Live By here at KNEO Radio. I want to personally invite you to attend our second prayer summit, which will be held January the 18th, Saturday from 9 to 1 at Community Chapel Church, 2740 East 26th Street in Joplin, Missouri. Child care will be provided and there will be a free brunch starting from 1030 to 1130. And then the seminar goes from nine to one. If you are interested in attending, we need you to RSVP here at the station at 417-451-5636. And also please indicate if you do need child care and how many children you have and the ages of those children. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you on January the 18th at our second prayer summit in Joplin, Missouri.